Excuse me, Mr. and Mrs. Yes, Doctor? Your son or daughter? Niece or nephew? Cousin or neighbor? Complete stranger? Is suffering from progeria. Progeria. About one in every four million children is born very different from the rest. This child will grow to lose weight and hair, suffer from arthritis, joint stiffness, and potentially hip dislocations. They will struggle with progressive cardiovascular disease and eventually pass away from, most likely, either heart attack or stroke. This may sound as though it is all part of the typical aging process, but the child will only age between 8 and 21 years. This child will have progeria. It will always be a lot of work to play, and being awake can make me feel tired. Nothing's easy, but I don't see how this is fair. You're not supposed to already be wise in elementary school. In 90% of patients with hutchinson gilford progeria syndrome, it has been found that they possess a specific point mutation. This mutation changes one DNA nucleotide, cytosine, with an ethylamine nucleotide with position 1824 in the code. This mutation results in a normal version of the laminate protein that is called progerin, and it is missing 50 amino acids towards one end. This truncated version of the lamin A protein does not fully achieve the expected growth in proper form and is thus missing some of the amino acid residues that are present in the normal protein at this end. These proteins intended to fuel the cell and make it work typically cannot perform their expected function because due to the mutation they lack all of the necessary tools and are, un and are unable to do so. Lamin A and C are a type of structural protein called intermediate filament proteins. Or, IF, or IFs, which are a family of related proteins that share common structural and sequence features. They can be found in the nuclear laminae, the key contents of the nuclear envelope that surrounds the nucleus and cells, providing stability and strength. The nuclear envelope is responsible for regulating the movement of molecules into and out of the nucleus, and potentially the activity of certain genes as well. When the mutation for progeria occurs, molecules struggle to pass in and out of the nucleus as necessary and the cells function overall less vigorously, as though they are already worn down from over the years, and genes may work less actively. The body wears down almost simultaneously while developing, resulting in an extremely accelerated aging process. How do you tell someone that their infant doesn't have much time? How do you tell your child there's hope? How do you look your child in the say it's okay that you might never go to prom, never graduate from high school? Is there a way to say it's a relief because you never wanted to teach them how to drive a car anyways? Is there a way to pretend it's okay to use up their time by letting yourself sleep at night? Progeria is an autosomal recessive disease, which means that an individual carrying a mutation in a single gene does not show any symptoms. In fact, the mutation is typically carried in the parent's DNA before conception of the child afflicted with progeria. It very rarely affects the parents and almost never occurs in any additional children in the family. A parent is supposed to protect their child. A parent is supposed to keep them safe. A parent is not supposed to outlive their child. Sometimes we don't get to keep our gifts. Though the effects of the LMNA mutation, premature cell death, are occurring essentially from birth, it is not until the infant is between 18 to 24 months old when the symptoms are able to be recognized. Symptoms of progeria may include growth failure, loss of body fat and hair, aged looking skin, stiffness of joints, hip dislocation, high blood pressure, and progressive cardiovascular disease and atherosclerosis clogged and hardened arteries. This leads to the cause of death almost always being linked to some aspect of heart disease. As of yet, no cure has been found for progeria. However, there has been a great deal of research and a lot of investigation into potential treatments. There has been support for the potential benefits of various injections, among them forms and aspects of human growth hormone, as well as a cancer drug called Tipifarno. Part of a family of drugs called enzyme inhibitors, it inhibits the transformation of normal cells into cancer cells. In a promising study done by UCLA researchers in 2006 on transgenic mice, it was shown to reduce the problems of cardiovascular disease, which is the primary cause of early death in progeria patients. 
These findings show promise in improving the quality of each patient's life as well as a result of this experimental drug. Also, coronary artery bypass surgery and or angioplasty have been tried for some children with progeria in efforts to ease the frequently life-threatening complications from their cardiovascular difficulties. Progeria has been calculated to occur in around one out of every four to eight million newborns. It is very rare, with only about 130 cases having been documented since 1886. It affects both sexes equally and all races. Within the past 15 years, children with progeria have been reported in over 25 countries around the world. I might never have the chance to go to prom, receive a high school diploma, or even drive a car, but I have hope, and that's something I plan to hold on to.